Let us start the last um, talk, uh, Shilpa Gupta, existence and the multiplicity of solutions to anchor growth equations with critical exponential growth and perturbation term. Please. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you for, for the introduction. introduction. Hello, Hello everyone. everyone. I'm, I'm Shilpa Gupta. Gupta. I'm, I'm from, from India. India. Uh, so. This is a problem that uh, we are going to discuss today. So the problem is minus t of integral over omega, modulus of gradient u to the power n dx into n Laplace into z equals to f x u upon um, modulus of x to the power u plus lambda h x into omega u is equals to zero on the boundary of omega, where omega is the boundary of the domain which contains the operation. B is greater than or equals to zero, and B is less than n. N is the dimension N is greater than equals to 2. And N Laplacian operator is defined in this equation, which is equals to divergence of modulus of gradient to the power N minus 2 into grid Q. Here, lambda is a shooting very small real parameter, and H is a perturbation term, which belongs to some shootable uh, dual space, uh, solo dual space. So, uh, this equation. Uh, contains this term a uh, of integral over omega and uh, gradient of u to the power n dx, which makes this uh, equation known as a known point by the identity. This is the reason we will call it uh, the non local problem, and this term we call as a Kirchhoff term. So, the problem of this type, uh, Kirchhoff type of problem, started with the work of Kirchhoff, where the author studied this type of uh, problems. I will give uh, some important references about the catch of term in the last of my slides. So here we have the sublog space in which we will pose our problem. Our uh, space under the consideration is W node 1 and omega. And uh, this is a norm space with this defined norm. And this is a reflexive Banach space. Uh, next, we have a variational framework for our uh, problem. Next, first we have uh, written uh, in the equation three, uh, the weak formulation for our problem one. So U belongs to W, W means W naught one and omega is a weak solution for our problem. If it satisfies this equation three for all, P belongs to W. Next, we have written here the energy functional I lambda corresponding to our problem. So next we can see that this I lambda is a C1 functional and uh, in, uh, in the last equation we have written the expression of uh, the derivative of I lambda. So here we can see that the critical points of I lambda is uh, the critical uh, points of uh, I, I lambda will be the weak solution for our problem for our given problem. So a problem is variational and the problem of finding a weak solution for a problem is equivalent to finding a critical point for this function i lambda. So next, we, our focus is to find a critical point for uh, uh, this uh, function i lambda. Uh, we say, uh, if we uh, discuss what is a critical point for a function, so the, the critical point for a uh, function i lambda will be a point in the space u such that i dash i lambda i lambda i, uh, dash u is equals to zero. So mm, uh, to find uh, or to calculate the critical point for our problem, we will use uh, the variational methods. In particular, we will use mountain pass theorem to prove the existence of a solution for our problem. On the next slide, here we have written some set of assumptions on the nonlinear term f. So the first condition is as we have, uh, uh, as I have written in my uh, title that f has a critical exponential growth at infinity. So the first, uh, first condition is that f has a, critical exponential growth at infinity. Then the second condition that we have assumed on F is limit t goes to infinity f x t upon t to the bar n minus 1 equals to 0 for all x belongs to omega closer. Then third condition we have the most 
celeb uh, most famous amlosotelium one is condition and then and we have l4 and l5 condition we have assumed only uh, two conditions you, excuse me uh, yeah. uh, please uh, previous slide yes uh, what is n theta n is dimension but what is theta yes yes uh, n is the dimension of the space in which omega uh, uh, our omega is a subset of rn here i have written this omega is a subset of rn so n is a dimension of yes but what is theta what is uh, Sigma in L3, sigma is greater than N theta. Yes. What is theta? Uh, uh, theta, uh, sigma is greater than N theta. I have a uh, uh, theta is a sum number which is uh, greater than zero. I haven't mentioned here. Okay. Sorry. Uh, yeah. So uh, we have, uh, uh, yeah, in this slide I have mentioned that theta is greater than one. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, so this theta is related to this theta. Sigma is greater than n theta. Ah, okay. Here. I see. Yeah. 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 So A uh, from R plus to R plus is a continuous function and satisfy the uh, following two invariant, following two conditions. First condition is there exists a positive real number A naught such that A of S greater than equals to A naught and A is known decreasing for all S greater than zero. Uh, and second is there exists a theta greater than one such that A S upon S to the power theta minus one is known decreasing for S greater than zero. Next, we have the statement of mountain pass theorem, which we will use to prove the existence of critical point for our functional I lambda. So, this uh, the statement required the definition of placement condition. So, first we will discuss the definition of placement condition. Then we will discuss the statement of mountain pass theorem. So let V be a banach space and J V to R be a C1 function. We say J satisfy placement condition where C belongs to R is a constant. If every sequence UN in V such that J of UN converges to C and J dash UN converges to zero in the dual space V star has a convergent subsequence, then we say our uh, functional J satisfy placement condition. Next, we have the statement of mountain pass theorem. Mountain pass theorem states that let V be a Banach space and J V to R be a C1 function which satisfy placement condition and satisfy these two geometric conditions, then J has a critical value. So we will which satisfy this characterization. So we will use this particular theorem to prove the existence of a solution. Here we have a version of Moser, similar version of Moser Trudinger inequality, which is given by Adimurthy and Sandeep. So this, uh, as uh, we have discussed that our non-linear term has exponential growth at infinity. So due to that reason, we will use this particular inequality to prove the geometric conditions and other other results for uh, that are required to prove our uh, existence result. So this is the Moser-Trudinger inequality, uh, version of Moser-Trudinger inequality that we are going to use. So here we have the statements of our main theorem. The first statement, uh, uh, the mm, so the theorem four states that suppose that the condition L1 to L5 and A1 to A2 are satisfied, then there exists lambda 2 greater than 0 such that for each uh, lambda which is lies between 0 to lambda 2, then the problem 1 has a non trivial being solution. Here I have taken this constant lambda 2. The reason I will discuss later why I have considered uh, why I have given this name lambda 2 here. Then we have the statement of um, theorem 5. Suppose that um, the condition L1 to L5 and A1, A2 are holes, then there exists lambda 3 greater than 0, so that for each lambda lies between 0 to lambda 3, then the problem 1 has a non trivial minimal type solution which has negative energy. So, moreover, this the solution uh, exists in this theorem will be different uh, from the solution that 
exist from the previous theorem, so uh, which proves the multiplicity of uh, solution. So to pro before proving our mean result, we will prove some series of lemma that are required to prove our mean result. Here we have these two lemmas. These two lemmas are uh, can be easily proved by using the growth conditions on the function f and by using the even ending conditions. Uh, once we have these lemmas, we will get the arithmetic conditions of mountain pass theorem. So the only uh, thing is remaining to use mountain pass theorem is the PS condition, which is the main difficulty to prove the existence result. So uh, here we have again two lemmas, uh, which will be required to prove the multiplicity result. So next by lemma six and seven, geometric conditions are mountain um, pass theorem satisfied. So we have a sequence u n subset of w such that i lambda u n converges to c m and i dash i lambda dash u n converges to zero as n tending to infinity, where c m has this characterization. Uh, the series, uh, the sequence will we will have by the version of mountain pass theorem without PS conditions. So the only thing is remaining to show that this PS sequence satisfy the PS condition. That means this type of sequence has a convergent subsequence. So as we have uh, considered the critical exponential growth for the nonlinearity function, so we have some lack of compactness compactness here so we cannot prove the ps conditions directly for i lambda so we need some information about this mountain pass level the cm about uh, we need some extra information about this level so in the lemma in this lemma we have proved that the this mountain pass uh, level cm satisfies this inequality so this lemma in is a uh, uh, involves some construction and uh, quite this lemma is quite constructive. So we haven't due to the shortage of time, I haven't included the proof of this lemma in my slides. If you are interested, I can share with you the paper in which I have proved this lemma where the CM is less than this quantity. So next we have these two lemmas, uh, uh, which states that if uh, C satisfy uh, if uh, 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 we have a PS sequence, and uh, if C satisfies this condition, if we have a PS sequence with uh, constant C and C satisfies this condition, then there exists a lambda 1 greater than 0 such that for each lambda lies between 0 to lambda 1, we have this condition. In the next lemma, we have proved that if we have this condition, then UN converges to U naught in W up to a subsequence. So, by using these two lemmas, we can say that if we have a PS sequence and if C satisfies this condition, then UN converges to U naught in W up to a subsequence. From here, we can see that uh, every PS sequence satisfies PS condition. So, we are ready to do our uh, main theorem. So, by lemma 6 and 7, geometric conditions are satisfied for the functional I lambda. Hence, we have a PS sequence, so uh, with the, we have this mountain pass level, and we have proved that C M uh, is less than this quantity. Then, by the previous, as we have discussed that, uh, uh, if we have uh, this uh, inequality, this bound, then PS conditions are satisfied. So we have a critical point for i lambda which satisfy this condition which implies that um is a weak solution for uh, problem one furthermore un is a non-trivial solution since uh, h is known is equal to zero where h is a perturbation term so here in this theorem we have proved the existence of a solution for our problem uh, in the next theorem we will prove the existence of another solution this uh, existence of another solution we will prove by using a clear variational principle so in the lemma six we have proved that we can choose uh, or we can we have a sequence rho lambda converges to zero 
has lambda converges to zero. Hence, we will choose a lambda two such that this condition, uh, such that for each lambda belongs to uh, in this interval, we have this uh, biggest row lambda is tending to zero, is lambda tending to zero. So we can choose a row lambda like this. So next we will consider a space in the W in W the space uh, B row lambda closer. So clearly this is a convex and complete space of W and the functional I lambda is C1. And since this space is closed and bounded, so this uh, uh, this this functional I lambda will be bounded below in the space. So by this major limitation principle, we have a sequence in the space such that I lambda UN converges to zero, which is equal to infimum of norm of U less than equals to rho lambda I lambda U and uh, norm of I lambda dash UN converges to zero. And enough to prove that if we pass the limit in this uh, in uh, in uh, the, this convergence so then we will get i dash lambda un is equal tending to zero or equals to zero if we if we prove that un converges to some u node and i the i lambda dash u node is equal to zero then that will be the critical count of i lambda and will be the solution of our problem so for the sufficiently large n, we will choose this. This uh, uh, we have this, and by the choice of uh, rho lambda, we have the we have this inequality. So we can add this thing here, so so that the lemma well is satisfied. So here we have uh, by lemma twelve, we can say that. UN converges to U node strongly, so we can pass the limit here and we will get I lambda dash U node is equals to zero. So U node will be the critical point of I lambda. So next we will prove that U node will be different from UM, that UM will is a solution that we have obtained via mountain pass theorem. So by uh, Remark nine: We have I lambda U naught is equals to zero, which is less than is equals to zero. But I lambda U M is equals to C M, and where C M is greater than is equals to zero by mountain pass theorem. So these two solutions are different. Hence, we have proved that there exist two solutions for our problem. So next, we have some important references that we have used. To prove these results. Yeah. Thank you. I will be happy to answer your questions if you may have any. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Please, questions. Okay. Uh, I have a question. Uh, could you show the assumptions uh, on uh, the uh, parameters uh, B uh, and alpha. Yeah. Mm, mm, yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. Well, mm, uh, what is alpha uh, not here? I, is it uh, an arbitrary uh, quantity mm. or it is related somehow with the, um, the Moser constant? Uh, Yes, 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 it, it is, is related to the Moser constraint. constraint. This is the Moser constraint here. So we are saying uh, this is related to this. Uh, we are taking alpha node such that this is satisfied. Yes, but uh, in that. Uh, but yeah, this is. It is not written. Uh, I, uh, 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 it, it was, this is this is less than infinity for all alpha greater than zero. Mm -hmm. So that's why we haven't taken any okay. uh, conditions on alpha naught and mm -hmm. saying this mm -hmm. is the critical exponent. Mm -hmm. And I also I have a comment. 
yes, yes. you call it a mother Trudinger inequality. Uh, in fact, yes. uh, this inequality, uh, the embedding itself, uh, was proved earlier by uh, Yudovich and Pohajayev uh, in uh, 1962. Uh, uh, you can mm -hmm. uh, find the corresponding uh, references. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, then uh, uh, found uh, the uh, sharp constant alpha in this uh, 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 embedding theorem. Um, so um, yeah, okay. you can uh, include uh, these uh, references in the list. Again, thank, thank you so much for your suggestions. Mm -hmm. I will uh, include next time. Mm -hmm. No questions? Comments? No. Thank you again.